Hey guys, welcome. Dr. Isabella Wentz here. I'm so excited to be here with you. Um, you may know me from The Thyroid Secret, from my first book, Hashimoto's The Root Cause, or from my website, thyroidpharmacist.com, or from this Facebook page. I'm really, really excited to have you here. Today we're going to be doing a live book reading from my brand new book called Hashimoto's Protocol. This is actually hitting the stores and um, is getting released on March 28th. This is just in two days. I am so, 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 so excited about this. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell if I can hardly contain the excitement. I've been working on this book since, um, pretty much since 2014. And the um, book was the culmination of my experience in working with people with Hashimoto's after I was able to recover my own health. Um, in 2013, after, um, you know, after having Hashimoto's since 2009 and doing some work to take back my health, I was finally able to get myself into remission. And then I released Hashimoto's The Root Cause and I shared my story. And I shared everything that I did and all the research that I did to help myself recover. Um, from that time on, I started doing a lot of advocacy and a lot of work with people with Hashimoto specifically. Um, used my background as a pharmacist to kind of bridge the world between natural medicine and conventional medicine and find out what the best strategies were, find out what people's unique triggers were, and really um, was able to come through with some amazing breakthroughs and protocols in how to help a person feel significantly better within just two weeks of um, utilizing various natural protocols um, based on some of the things that I did but that also evolved from my work with um, over a thousand people with, with Hashimoto's. Um, so I'm really, really excited you guys are here. Um, it's been a little while since we've done a Facebook Live event. Um, I know I did one throughout the Thyroid Secret and I really, really enjoyed hanging out with you guys and having an opportunity to chat with you. If you are live and you're watching me here, I would love for you to say hello and let me know where you're from. Looks like um, Stephanie says hello. Hi, Stephanie. Debbie says hi. Uh, Sherry, hello, Sherry. Fu, hello, Fu. Hello, Courtney. Courtney from Chicago is here. Nice, nice to see you. And we have Jennifer. Jennifer says she pre-ordered a while ago. Rose says, hi, Dr. Wentz, missed seeing you live. Hope you're rested. Thanks so much, Rosa. We, I did get some rest, um, and so I'm back bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, um, getting lots of sleep nowadays, um, which is, of course, a really important part of healing. Andrea says, hello. Neela says, hi. And G Gija, that's a really pretty name, from Minneapolis. Just thanks for all you do. Aw, thank you. Marnie, hello. How are you doing? Hello, Jill from New Zealand. Carla just watched episode six, that's awesome, and she started implementing a few dietary changes a week ago and lost five pounds. You know, that, that's amazing. Carla, I would give you a high five if you were here. Um, so I won't because it might look a little bit awkward on camera. Heather from Ohio, Carla from Hollywood, another Bonnie from Chicago, another hometown girl, Ginger, hello from Minnesota, Sally, that's awesome, Alexis, this is so great to have you on here. Alexis is asking how to fix low stomach acid where you can't take betaine with pepsin or apple cider vinegar. Um, one of the things that can be helpful is doing thiamine. So thiamine can be helpful for building up our stomach acid. So I hope that helps you. Um, let's say we have Kimberly from Louisiana, um, Iris from Iceland. Wow, that's amazing. Um, Stephanie, um, Thank you so much for sharing the video. I really, really appreciate it. Um, make sure that you guys share this on your timeline and share this with your friends. Um, you never know who's struggling with a thyroid condition. Hashimoto's affects 27% of our general population. And um, this, this is something that oftentimes goes undiagnosed and is never, hardly ever properly treated by the conventional medical model. So, um, so together, um, we're going to change that. Uh, Hashimoto's protocol has... A 90-day plan for reversing thyroid symptoms and getting your health back. And my really big hope for this book is that everybody who is diagnosed with Hashimoto's will be able to read this and that they'll be able to um, follow the 90-day plan. Uh, the plan can be followed regardless of what triggered your condition and then start feeling better and start recovering their health. Um, after that, the book is divided into 
three parts. Um, the first part is a introduction. So I don't know if you guys can see this. Let's see here. Part one is getting to know Hashimoto's and the root cause approach. Part two is the fundamental protocols. So this is the 90-day protocol that will help you reverse um, your thyroid symptoms, and this is something that everybody can follow regardless of your root cause. About 80% of people feel significantly better by following this. And then the advanced um, root cause assessments, these are going to help you figure out and dial in what other kinds of triggers you may have. Um, so this is kind of the 20% of, of people who are complicated cases. And part three goes into the advanced protocols. So what do you do um, to optimize your thyroid hormone? And I have protocols in there um, that involve medications, um, low-level laser therapy, um, that involve using some natural means as well. And some of these things can actually potentially um, reverse the thyroid damage, which is really, really exciting. And I don't think this is out in any other, I know for a fact it's not out in any other books out there. Um, protocols for mastering nutrition and nutrients. So how to tailor the diet to your needs. Um, you know, it's wonderful to have protocols that benefit about 80% of people. And so the fundamental protocols are based on that. But then how do you tweak your diet if you're part of that 20%? How to overcome traumatic stress. Traumatic stress is a very, very much underappreciated root cause for people, and that can really delay a person's healing. So I have protocols on that. Protocols for addressing infections. Infections are sort of, um, you know, those things that don't get enough attention because they are low grade, they're chronic, and they're almost silent. The only reason you would know that you had an infection, for example, is if you followed um, a clean diet for three months, and at that point, you started to lose more food. So you, you continue to have symptoms and had a plateau and did not go into remission in Hashimoto's. That's usually a good sign that you either have an infection or a toxin on board. So we have protocols for addressing infections and then protocols for removing toxins. So um, really excited that you guys are here. We're gonna do, um, we're gonna do a few questions. And then we're going to go through um, a little bit more about why I wrote the book and then what's, we just went through what's in it. And then I'm going to do a little bit of a reading. So um, please share this on your timeline and let people know if you're, um, you know, how excited you are about this information because uh, this is really groundbreaking information that can help you recover your health um, in as little as two weeks I've seen people felt like feeling significantly better on these protocols and um, you know not to, not to give the whole story away but this is part of the reason why I decided to come out with the second book so go ahead and keep typing up your questions guys it's nice to see you um, Robin says hello from Hubbard Lake hello Robin nice to see you Carla said Carla uh, is congratulating Carla because Carla's had some success already um, Chris says hello from Rochester and she's pre-ordering her book so if you guys have already pre-ordered your book um, the shipping times are going to be between March 28th and April 15th so um, what I would love for you to do is if you once you get a copy of your book um, if you can take a selfie to it and then post it on social media post it on Facebook or Instagram and tag thyroid pharmacist Dr. Isabella Wentz and um, that's my that's my official name on Facebook um, on Instagram, my official name is Isabella Wentz PharmD. So if you could go ahead and tag me and let people know once you received your book, that'll that'll make me really happy to get this out there because it's been, um, you know, it's it's been a long work in progress. A lot of a lot of sleepless nights, um, a lot of achy joints from writing so much um, on you know both on paper and and on the computer, and a lot of you know a lot of time taking what I learned from clients as well as taking the latest and greatest research and trying to synthesize it all into, um, <laughs> into a usable format. So one of the things I'm excited about is I got a chance to work with Harper One, which is a fantastic publisher, and they helped me pare down the book from, um, from actually it was, um, it was 120,000 words and they got they got it pared down to about 70 to 80,000 words to um, make it more approachable and make it easier to read um, and make it flow better. Um, and they also, of course, designed a beautiful cover for it. And, you know, I'm just really, really pleased with, with the book. And I think it's going to help you guys. Um, and it really has these protocols dialed in so that anybody, 
you know, anybody can kind of follow it without necessarily being a Hashimoto's expert. Kelly says, hello from Southern Illinois. Have been doing all of the supplements and feel absolutely wonderful. And she's also doing um, 100% AIP. That's so great. I'm so excited you guys are, are seeing these changes. Um, let's see. Mar Mary Elena wants to know, are thyroid nodules related to Hashimoto's? Yes, um, and what's a good treatment diet for nodules? You guys actually, um, and this is kind of an accidental serendipitous finding, but anything that you do from Hashimoto's protocols is gonna help you reverse your thyroid nodules. Um, I didn't realize this until I started having clients who, um, who just decided to follow the recommendations of um, autoimmune paleo diet, of getting rid of H. pylori, of getting rid of their gut infections, um, supporting their gut, and lo and behold, they would have um, their thyroid nodules disappearing. I actually have one patient's thyroid ultrasound for um, five to six consecutive years of the thyroid nodules and what changes she made throughout um, and how the nodules shrunk. So she had three thyroid nodules that were growing um, over time and as she started implementing autoimmune paleo, she got rid of the blastocystis hominis parasite took um, selenium. She didn't take any thyroid meds in this particular case. She didn't have um, Hashimoto's, just the nodules, and then the nodules went away. Um, and you know, one year it was like they were getting smaller and they kept getting smaller and smaller until they all went away. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm excited to release a blog post about this. Um, after, after the release of this book, I'm gonna get back to doing writing and doing lots of blogging. Um, so I'm excited to, to get, that, get back into that. Um, and if you guys go to thyroidpharmacist.com slash gift, you'll be able to subscribe to my blog if you haven't already to make sure that you keep up with kind of the latest and the greatest research. And I try to get things out in the blog in bite-sized chunks. And I should also mention we're doing pre-orders for my book right now. And when you pre-order the book, when you go to thyroidpharmacist.com slash protocol, um, and this is also linked up in the description of this live event, you'll be able to get some awesome pre-order bonuses for, um, as, as a, a gratitude from me for pre-ordering the book. And so we've got um, recipe guides, we've got finding Dr. Wright guides, all kinds of stuff that will help you on your journey. Natasha says, hello from Toronto, Canada. Thank you so much. I'm ordering my book. So excited. Thanks so much for, um, for supporting my work. It has been a lot to get this information out there and I'm really, really happy to see what impact it's going to make in the world. Um, I, you know, I just, between the Hashimoto's protocol and of course the thyroid secret, it's I feel like they're two perfect um, complements. So the thyroid secret raised a lot of awareness about um, all of the different challenges. And then the Hashimoto's protocol has all these things that you need to do written out for you. So um, the plan is, you know, basically we have exactly what diet you need to follow um, that's based that's worked for most people like a templated diet and then I have statistics of what's worked I have um, daily oh, this is funny I have sample daily meal plans that you can follow um, I have like supplement schedules which I know people really loved for from my first book and so we go through the different supplement schedules how which supplements to take for what reason and when and um, we have this for the liver support protocol, the adrenal support protocol, and the gut protocol, which are the fundamental protocols in the book. So the liver support protocol is two weeks, adrenal support is four weeks, and gut um, support is six weeks. And so you do those consecutively, and that helps to reset your body. And you should start actually seeing significant results and improvements within the first two weeks of the liver protocol. And then you kind of just keep improving, improving, improving. Um, I know this because I piloted this approach with over a thousand of my clients and people who were part of my group programs in the last few years. And I did survey them and um, a significant amount of them saw a big improvement in how they felt within the first two weeks by doing the liver support protocol. It was um, quite, um, of course, surprising for me, if, if, like how, how good, how well it worked with um, people's multiple chemical sensitivities going away, with their joint pains going away, having more energy, having less fatigue, you know, even weight kind of coming off. So it's been really, really exciting to see that. Hey, you guys, thanks so much for your questions and thank you so much for sharing this. Um, 
Marta says, hello, Cześć from the Netherlands. I'm so glad that I found you and your books. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Um, are root vegetables okay? Um, root vegetables generally are going to be okay for most people. Um, you do want to tailor your diet accordingly to your needs. So for example, um, you know, like sweet potatoes, mostly they're going to be just fine with the autoimmune protocol that the root cause autoimmune protocol that's based in the book. Um, my protocols um, for nutrition in the book are based on a few different dietary theories and I've kind of tweaked them to how they work best for people with thyroid disease and people with Hashimoto's from just from my experience. So, um, and you know, of course, from the feedback from thousands of people, um, clients and readers alike. And what I found is that, um, you know, there are certain foods that are not optimal for people with thyroid disease. And some of them are going to be things like seaweed, which are generally included on autoimmune protocols, but they're not, um, they're not going to be included in, in my recipes and my recommendations. Um, and sweet potatoes can be really, really great. They're autoimmune friendly. Um, however, you do want to make sure that you're not reacting to them um, and that you're tailoring your blood sugar accordingly. So I have um, ways for you to determine that in the book. We have protocols in the back of the book that uh, talk about how to tailor your diet to your needs. I'm really, really excited to, for you guys to read the book and um, can't wait to see your comments and can't wait to see what reviews um, you guys are going to have on Amazon of the book. Um, I know it's been um, you know, a long time in the making. I've been hoping to get it out into the world as soon as possible and I'm very, very proud of how it's become. Um, Gail says, we appreciate you sharing so much valuable information. It's my pleasure, Gail. Um, Linda says, I just started taking B1, which is thiamine, is 600 the correct dosage. That's correct. Steen, um, thank you so much for sharing this post. I really, really appreciate it. And if you guys, if you can share this on your timeline, let people know. Terry says, um, I'm so excited and your book is coming on Tuesday. That's awesome. Um, Lisa wants to know what's the difference between the new book um, and then the root cause book. So, um, so the root cause book, which you guys can see right here behind me, this was a book that was a culmination of my experience with um, Hashimoto's and how I got myself well um, and the research that I did to do that. So I'm, you know, it, it was the story of a very determined woman that wasn't going to say, um, that wasn't going to take no for an answer when it came to re recovering her health. And I detailed everything that worked for me and I also detailed the research that I shared. Um, after the book was released, um, I wanted to spread the awareness about how it was possible to reverse thyroid disease and thyroid symptoms and that there were triggering things that happened to trigger thyroid disease. And um, after that point, I started working exclusively with people with Hashimoto's. So um, I left my job as a public health pharmacist and became a consultant working, um, a functional medicine consultant working with people with Hashimoto's specifically. And through that process, I came to uncover a lot of different um, root causes and I came to discover that some people um, you know didn't react well to certain types of supplements that I was fine with and you know other people were just fine with taking probiotics and taking B vitamins but there were some people that for some reason um, those supplements didn't sit well with them or we would try different things and things just didn't seem to get better and so I decided to try to simplify things and you know try to of course, simplification always takes a lot, a lot of research and a lot of experience. Um, my first book talked about the dig at it approach, so it was going through and digging to figure out what your root causes are, and it was kind of a process of elimination, saying like these are the potential root causes, this is what you need to do. And in some cases, it was challenging because a person might find out that they had um, an infection for a root cause, and they would take months and months and months to try to get rid of that infection. Um, and by the time they got rid of the infection, their adrenals would be shot, um, their gut health would be compromised, and their detox pathways would be compromised, which would mean that they would be feeling unwell despite this infection being gone. And so I decided to focus on, um, with my clients, like how do I just get them to start feeling better? How do they feel better? Like I just want them to see results because 
you know, these are kind of things that keep me up at night is like, I want people to heal. I want people to feel better. Like this information is there so that they can recover their health. I don't want them to like just keep going deeper and deeper down a rabbit hole, excluding more foods and taking all these supplements and like struggling more and more. Um, and so I figured out that a lot of my clients, what they had in common that um, were having all these reactions was that they had um, impaired ability to handle toxins. So for some reason, their liver had a backlog. Sometimes it could be because of the MTHFR gene mutation. Sometimes it could be because we're not sweating when we have thyroid disease. Um, or, you know, just living in our modern world, we end up with all these toxins within our bodies. And then we're not able to get rid of them through sweat. We're not able to get rid of them through the gut. Um, they reduce our resiliency. And so um, one of the things I wanted to do with them is think about, like, how do I improve their resiliency? How do I make them stronger? How do I, how do I like, take them from being, like, super sick and toxic and make them closer to what an average person would be or, like, a slightly sick person would be, right? And so I came up with the liver protocol, a two-week protocol to kind of kickstart their healing and to get some of those pathways, those liver, um, supporting the liver enzyme and the liver pathways to start getting rid of some of that toxic backlog. And I found that through this, people were able to start feeling better. And then I focused on another um, strategy for building resiliency, which was supporting the adrenals. So again, that helped people feel better. And when they were able to support the adrenals, in some cases, some of their infections went away. And then the um, third part was supporting the gut. And that, again, built resiliency. We gave them more nutrients. They were feeling better and feeling nourished. And that part was focusing on, um, you know, helping, and that helped them feel better. And in some cases, also helped them get rid of infections and toxins because once again, the gut became available as a detox pathway. And so um, that was like really, really cool because it was like regardless of what the person's root cause was, they started feeling better with the protocols, um, which which is fabulous because you don't have to spend as much money on lab testing, functional medicine doctors, you know, detective work. These are things you can do in your own home. So, you know, the liver protocol focuses on getting you to sweat, um, drinking hot lemon water, um, to removing certain foods, removing fluoride from your water supply, and doing all these kind of picking all these low hanging fruit um, that really kickstart your healing. And then we kind of progress through that throughout the, throughout it. The other thing that's different about the book is that through my work with um, people with Hashimoto's, I was able to uncover different types of root causes that I wasn't aware of before um, because you know I personally didn't have them when I wrote the first book. Um, one particular root cause, for example, is um, breast implants. Breast implants can trigger thyroid disease in women and um, potentially in men too, but you know, I can't say that from experience, but I, um, you know, I, I personally have never had breast implants, but when I started working with clients, I would have them do a health timeline, and there were quite a few women that got sick, that were perfectly healthy before they got breast implants, and they got sick after they got them, and so that was kind of a, you know, an aha moment for me, and I have had aha moments like that throughout the last, um, you know, since 2000, 2013 working with clients um, over four years and you know that's all I do is I only work with people with Hashimoto's I don't work with with anybody with like high blood pressure or diabetes or anything unless they happen to also have Hashimoto's but it was like huh okay I'm starting to see some new patterns and so the advanced um, protocols are based on some of these unique triggers and things that um, you know I came to learn from my clients or that were published pub published in the latest research all right, so let's get some more questions in. What levels of antibodies are too much? What would indicate Hashimoto's? Um, you want to have them under one. Um, you know, of course, whenever I, I see a person, um, what my goal for people with thyroid disease is to get them into remission. And what remission means, and I can actually, um, if I could find the little excerpt from the book, I just got this in the mail, so I'm not quite sure what page is where. But um, getting a person in remission is is going to be something that's that's a journey and that's going to be um, that's going to be progressive and so um, generally if you have an antibody um, above one or two there's a potential indication that your body has recognized the thyroid gland as a foreign invader and that you need to do something about it 
And so um, generally what I like to see with my clients is I like to see a reduction in antibodies as we start working towards their health. Now, um, technically remission is, um, you know, there's not a specific number definition for people with Hashimoto's. Some say under 100, some say under 35. You know, for me, if I have somebody who had antibodies at 101 and they were feeling awful and then they went to 99 and they're still feeling awful, I wouldn't really consider that remission, right? But if I had somebody that had antibodies in the 2,000 range or the 5,000 range and their antibodies were under 500 or under 300 and they were feeling fabulous, I would consider that a remission, right? Because the point is we want to make sure the antibodies are reducing, that they're lowered because that indicates how aggressive the attack is on the thyroid. We also want to make sure the person is feeling well. Um, and so hopefully that helps. Michelle, is it common for Hashimoto's to develop Raynaud's? Potentially, so um, Raynaud's is not necessarily, hasn't necessarily been recognized as an autoimmune condition per se, but it's oftentimes correlated with autoimmunity. Um, Amanda, will your books be available in audio? Yes, yes, so there's gonna be an audio book of Hashimoto's Protocol and you can actually get that on, that on Amazon. Um, Yuli says, can't wait for the new book. I'm so glad to hear that. Can't wait for it to get in your hands. Um, Robin, what if you do not have a gallbladder with the liver protocol? So we actually have um, ways to support the gallbladder um, in the liver protocol as well. That, that's a part of the liver protocol. So the gallbladder kind of sneaks in there too. Um, I definitely recommend doing things like ox bile. They can be very, very helpful. Rachel says, thanks, Isabella. You're amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Rachel. I, I appreciate that. Um, Linda, will I need to take B1 and selenium forever? Not necessarily. So, um, you know, it's one of those things that what I hope that you learn from, from my work and from my books is you always want to be in communication with your body, right? So your body's going to change when you go through um, menopause, your body's going to change. When you have a baby, your body's going to change. Your needs are going to change. If you're under more stress, you're going to change. If you move to a different place, different environment, if you change your diet, and you know what I really hope that you get from Hashimoto's protocol and um, the rest of my work is learning how to be in communication with your body. So figuring out what um, what your body's trying to tell you. Um, you know, for some for some people, um, you know, they like for myself, I would say specifically, I used to be so completely disconnected from my body. I would have acid reflux and irritability and IBS and all these other problems. And I didn't really listen to my body. Instead, I took medications to suppress what my body was saying. Had I listened to my body, um, I would have heard that, hey, dairy's not working for you. You need to cut out dairy. And so um, once I did cut out dairy, my irritable bowel syndrome and acid reflux went away. And a lot of my other symptoms resolved as well. And so um, the goal for, for me is for you to be in constant communication with your body. Um, I, I know that's sort of like a... Uh, not necessarily a politician's answer, but sort of a broad answer. Um, more specific answer would be, I generally recommend doing selenium and thiamine for six to 12 months for most people and then kind of reevaluating if, if that helps. Rita, um, thiamine is B1. Thanks for sharing that. Um, let's see. Great questions, you guys. Debbie says she hears me and sees me. That's great. Um, Fiona says about her antibodies, they were 700 when they were first done. Um, Lynn wants to know, is there a test to show if mold is a trigger? Yeah, so that's a really great question. Um, and that's another trigger that I have discussed in the advanced protocols section in the book. Um, and so real-time lab is a lab that can do some testing for you. Um, and this will go through, um, you know, the, the Hashimoto's protocol goes through figuring out all of your triggers, like what specific lab tests you need to do, um, what are some of the indications that this might be an issue for you. So for example, for mold, is if your symptoms started when after moving into a new home or after you, your basement was flooded. If you have sinus issues, that's gonna be a potential symptom of mold. If you have cellulite on your body, that's actually a symptom of mold. Um, and so these are some the, you know, the whole book is tailored to help you figure out what's going on with you. There is a, um, there is an assessment in there that I used to use with my clients 
And um, I'm, I'm kind of laughing here because the assessment, the way that I initially gave it to people, it was like probably over a thousand questions, right? And then um, some of the questions were like redundant, so you you would be ask, you know, you'd be answering if you had a stomach ache in like every single one. And so um, my publisher was, uh, my editor was like, okay, so you've got this assessment that's like this many questions. Can you can you shorten it? And so now we have. Um, I just picked out the most important questions and kind of like the triggering questions and really work to get this uh, less redundant for you guys to, to make sure that you can really dial in for yourself. And these assessments help you dial into your thyroid hormone optimization, assessing your nutrition, tr assessing your traumatic stress, infections, and toxins. So um, I'll give you guys an example of the toxins assessment. I have skin rashes, breakouts, and other types of skin reactions. I have multiple chemical or odor sensitivities. I have or have had dental amalgams, silver fillings. I have consumed tuna more than 20 times per year. I have fatigue that's not caused by obvious reasons like exercise or staying up late. I don't tolerate alcohol. That's actually um, a symptom of toxicity within your body. I've had significant exposure to chemicals like pesticides, cosmetics, plastics, or industrial chemicals. I've lived in a place with mold. I've taken oral contraceptives for more than a year um, that usually results in estrogen toxicity. I have a history of blood clots in my body or menstrual cycle. I've worked on a farm, in a dental office, in a factory, or as a painter. This could mean you have halogen toxicity. I've lived in a big metropolitan city for over a year. I hardly sweat. I have the MTHFR gene mutation. I have a family history of birth defects. I have sinusitis. Again, this is a trigger for mold, so that's something that you want to keep in mind if you have any sinus issues that's usually going to be yeast or mold. I was a vegetarian for more than three months. Um, this could potentially contribute to copper toxicity. I have tingling in my extremities. Um, this is a very common sign of arsenic toxicity. I have a rapid pulse. I have a metallic taste in my mouth, and this could be a symptom of um, metallic taste in your mouth could be a symptom of any you know, any heavy metal toxicity really. And so um, then when you get to the individual chapter, we start talking deeper into, okay, so you're here in this toxins chapter and these are the tests you need to do to determine what your toxicity is and here are your specific protocols for overcoming mold, for breast implant illness, for toxic metals, um, you know, how do you, how do you overcome these things? Right, and so we have, and you know, copper toxicity, how do you support them, teach FRG mutation. So this is all in there. Um, the good news is, before we, get it, before we get too complicated, I'm always about trying to make things simple, is um, you know, the fundamental protocols go through the things that will help everybody. So regardless if you have mold toxicity, supporting your liver, adrenals, and gut is gonna help because when you support your liver, um, some of the mold biotoxins are going to leave. When you have um, breast implant illness, some of the breast implant, implant byproducts are going to, you know, some of the toxins created from that and some of the um, antibody complexes created by that are going to be resolved or lessened by the liver support as well as the gut support. So we utilize specific enzymes throughout to help you um, cleave or, you know, that's pharmaceutical speak here, but um, to help you break down some of those toxic and some of the bonds that the toxins make with your body and with themselves. All right, I got winded here. I was talking a little bit too much. So um, let's see. You guys have such great questions. Um, Anna says, I'm hypo. Will this book help me? Yeah, absolutely. So you should definitely get this book. Um, and um, definitely, if you're hypo, you want to check out the Balancing Your Hormones chapter, Optimizing Thyroid Hormones. Um, Nancy, do you ever get to eat fruit or coconut ice cream? I do. Yeah, actually, um, I'll tell you guys what my breakfast was this morning. It was, um, it was waffles with, with cream and with fruit and with eggs and... Um, what I think I had some tea as well. Oh, and bacon. Yeah, and so what I've done is I actually have modified the recipe. So I used coconut cream, and then um, I do eat regular fruits. So I pretty much eat all whole foods except for dairy. 
And then um, I use um, Otto's cassava flour to make the most delicious um, waffles. And, you know, it, it pretty much, you do, it, it's very, very similar to the way it works compared to regular flour, but it's gluten-free. And, you know, this is something that, like, when I first started my journey, I was very restricted, where I was only eating certain foods and I was still sick. And as I've been able to recover my health, recover my gut health, um, get rid of the toxic backlog, and really build up some of the resilience within my body, um, I've been able to introduce majority of foods back. The ones that are um, still off of my list are dairy, because I have um, basically a celiac version of dairy reaction. Um, I avoid gluten, and then I also avoid nuts because um, I have some sort of, I have a, a basically genetic propensity to hold on to copper. Um, my body just likes to hoard it, and so in order to support myself, um, I avoid things that are low copper, um, and if I, I avoid things that are high in copper, such as nuts. If I ever do eat nuts, I utilize certain kind of, I utilize supplements to help me get rid of the copper. Other than that, um, you know, I can keep it in check with nutrition. All right, great questions, you guys. So we're running about um, 2.45. I just always enjoy chatting with you guys. Um, I'm going to go through and read, do a little bit of reading from Hashimoto's Protocol. This book is now available for pre-order at thyroidpharmacist.com protocol. Um, if you order today, you might be able to get it by the 28th, um, which is its official release date. And I'm also giving away some fantastic bonuses, including meal plans and recipes and guides on how you could find Dr. Wright to help you along on your journey, um, as well as um, supplement guides and things you could do on your own. So, let me, I wish I had some glasses to put on to, to make it all fancy, a book reading, right? So this is really exciting. I've never done a book reading, and I'm excited to be doing this with you guys. I'm going to read from um, the chapter called My Hashimoto Success Story and How to Create Your Own. Um, if you guys like this, let me know in the comments um, if, if you'd like to, me to read to you from some other chapters. Um, if you don't have a cup of tea and a pen with you, you know, you may want to just kind of get some, chillax, and hope that you enjoy the, the reading. <clears throat> so, taking charge of your own health. The first step in taking charge of your own health is to dream big and set goals. We will focus on where you are later. For now, let's focus on where you want to be. If you don't have a health journal yet, now would be a great time to start one. Journaling is one of the best ways to track your progress and any challenges and successes. If you're high tech, you may prefer to keep a journal on a computer, or if you're old school like me, you may prefer a good old fashioned notebook. Whatever you choose, pick a journaling method you're likely to stick with. Start by reflecting on the following questions and writing down your answers. What are your health goals? Do you want to have more energy? Do you want to lose that extra 20 pounds? Do you want your hair to grow back? Really think about what you, want to, what you want to go well. If you guys could let me know in the comments what your health goals are. So that would be, um, that would be really great for everybody to see. And once you put it in writing, it, it kind of, I don't know, it's more likely to happen. That, that's what I've always found. Maybe your reasons are specific. Do you want to grow your hair back so that you can look great at your cousin's wedding? Do you want to have enough energy so that you can play with your kids for 15 minutes without getting tired or do a workout without feeling drained for days? Don't judge yourself and don't feel bad for your answer. It's okay and perfectly normal just to want to have nice hair or enough energy to go shopping at the mall without getting tired or to finally fit into that sexy dress. You don't need to have grand visions of saving the world once you're well. Start with you and making yourself better and soon enough, you'll find that you will want to do more good in the world. Um, this, this was certainly my experience. I just initially, you know, I really, really wanted to get myself better. And after that, now I've, you know, want to help heal the whole world. So, um, you know, you guys, once you recover your health, the possibilities are endless. But it's important to focus on you. So Corey says, lose 20 pounds and have more energy. Yes, you can do this. Charlene says, weight loss and grow my hair back. You can do this. You can do this. 
Um, Darlene, my hair, I've gotten rid of all of my symptoms except food sensitivities and my hair is still falling out. So um, you're, you're going to get your hair back, Darlene. Let's see. Um, one of my goals is to grow my hair back. Yes, yes. And ladies, just for, um, for all of you, I lost a third of my hair and I grew it all back. Now I have lots of hair everywhere. Um, except for like not in the parts where I don't want it. So I know that can be a, a symptom of um, usually blood sugar issues, just as, as a side note. Um, so if you're growing hair in places you don't want them, look into your blood sugar. Um, and that once you address your blood sugar issues, the hair on your head will grow more and the hair on your body will grow less. Just, um, just a little hint. Um, making time for yourself. Most of us are busier than ever, and that means less time to nurture ourselves. For example, a vast majority of moms don't take time for self-care. They wake up early to get their kids ready for school, or nurture, feed, and chase their small children. They try to keep their significant others, parents, and in-laws happy. They say yes to the demands made on them by their boss, clients, and coworkers, no matter how difficult, and I know I've been there. And they attend children's activities and friends' parties even when they're exhausted and running on empty. Um, you know, it goes back to having personal boundaries and making sure that you're making time for you and making yourself a priority. Their free time is spent keeping the house tidy and if they're lucky, grooming themselves to look presentable for others before they collapse into bed depleted just to do it all again the next day. Here's the thing, no matter whether you're married or single, have kids or not, healing cannot happen if you're constantly on empty and running on empty will eventually interfere with not just your health, but also your av availability and ability to care for others. Subtle signs like feeling annoyed or overwhelmed when your spouse, children, friends, boss, or parents need something are an indication that you are not taking care of you. And I have to give a shout out to my mom here because that was something that she made me realize is when I was, whenever I was losing patience with her and my mom is like one of the most caring, sweetest people in the entire world, that was a sign to me that I wasn't taking care of me. Um, and of course, I always felt bad when I would be like, oh, you know, mom, like, why are you calling me again? And she would be like, because I love you and I want to say hello. And that's always like, okay, yeah, that's, that's a sign that I'm not taking care of me. Remember, an empty cup cannot fill another. And I hope that you guys write this down and remember it. Um, I know it was life-changing for me when I first read it. You must fill your own cup first, and I encourage you to fill your cup with so much self-care that when you take the time to care for others, you will give from your overflow, and you will see that giving will feel effortless. Which is why, as you're reading this book, and especially when you begin the protocols, I want you to designate at least one hour to yourself each day. I know it won't be easy, and that an hour sounds like an eternity, but try your best. Make this time about you and what you want to do. But how, you're probably asking. First, write a list of all the things you're doing in a given day that keep you busy. Look for any time-sucking inefficiencies in your routine. Answer these questions. So um, just to try to make more space for healing in your life, you're going to want to reduce some things that are redundant. So are you going to the grocery store each day because you forgot something instead of making a four to seven day shopping list and meal plan? One of the cool things is when you um, pre-order this book, we actually give you a seven day shopping list and meal plan so you don't have to do it, you could just reuse ours. And I um, actually give you a couple of them so you could rotate through different ones each week. Are you cooking and cleaning for up to two hours every day instead of batch cooking for four hours on the weekends? Um, this is what I do. So I have, um, we do batch cooking for all of our meals either once or twice a week. And it's great because you just take, um, you know, you might take four to eight hours to do this, four to six hours, whatever but you end up with having food for the entire week. And then the best part is you don't have to clean up like all day, every day. So you just like make a mess once and you clean up once, which, which is my favorite part. Are you getting sucked into the television set or internet for four hours instead of focusing on you? Um, some other examples, paying your bills one by one instead of automating them. Are you opening up mail instead of signing up for paperless statements? Um, checking email all day instead of batch checking, cleaning your entire house by yourself instead of asking people to pitch in, or you know even hiring a housekeeper. Um, you know one of the things that really helped me was um, in making time and space for myself was 
was hiring a house, wonderful housekeeper. And, um, you know, I never really liked cleaning my house and it would take me a really, really long time. And even when I did clean it, it still, you know, it still wasn't as great of a job. And so I ended up finding um, wonderful ladies that are just amazing at what they do at the making the house look wonderful. Um, and that, um, that actually opened up an opportunity for me to initially work more hours um, and start saving up money so that I could try doing some functional medicine treatments. Um, at a later time, it was, you know, you know, you could use that extra time for working more or, um, you know, resting more, whatever, whatever it is a good fit, whatever it is that's a good fit for you. So, you know, I could go on, but you guys get the point. So um, I want to read it to you a little bit about empathy versus logic. Um, this is something that's really kind of key to getting yourself in the mindset for healing. Um, another important step to set the stage for getting better is addressing your relationship with grief. Have you grieved your diagnosis? Have you spent too much time grieving? Um, I know this is kind of touchy-feely here, but this is something that's so important because some of us will try to like, um, will will try to like, you know, get really strong and say, oh, well, it's not a big deal. I, I, it's not a big deal. Like I just could go on and whatever. And we kind of deny ourselves this opportunity to grieve. And then others, um, we might get stuck in, in, in that mentality of like, this is so bad and I could never get out of it. And so um, if you guys wanted to, if you could reflect on that, um, and let me know what you went through as part of your healing. While it's normal to grieve after your diagnosis, research shows that spending too much time feeling sorry for yourself will block you from taking appropriate and logical action. A 2012 study from Case Western Reserve University found that empathy and logical thinking turn off one another. This means that if you're feeling sorry for yourself, you may not make the best long-term long logical decisions for your health. You may do something desperate that could potentially harm you. Or you may think that you are beyond being helped and that there is no use in trying any diet, supplement, or protocol in the world. Or you may feel powerless and look for a savior without realizing how powerful you really are. Because really you, um, you, know, you hold the key to recovering your health. And when you're, in, um, when you're stuck in a place where you feel like nothing can help you, you look for a savior because you don't realize how powerful and strong you really are and the power you hold in recovering your, your health. On the other hand, empathy is also critical for anyone who's ill, which is why whether you were diagnosed yesterday or 20 years ago, I encourage you to take some time to grieve rather than suppressing your emotions about your condition. Show yourself the same amount of compassion that you would have for your mom daughter, sister, or close friend. You deserve it. Take the time to comfort yourself, soothe yourself, and embrace yourself in this new journey that you're taking, and then gently get yourself ready for action. I know it can be hard to separate your feelings from your health condition, but at times it may be helpful and even necessary. Once you've given yourself enough time to grieve, I encourage you to do your best to approach your condition as an objective scientist, implementing strategies, tracking your progress, and making modifications as needed along the way. Continue to work toward getting better, and it will happen. Um, so this is something that's going to be really, really key to um, recovering your health. Um, there's different stages of grief, and we want to go through the stages um, and not get stuck in a stage, right? So, so health grieving for yourself um, and you know, feeling sorry, that, that's okay. Um, you just don't want to get stuck there, but you do want to take that time. Um, Lourdes, thank you so much for sharing this video. Thank, I really, really appreciate it. Um, Susan says, Amen, Marie. Um, Gail says, Journaling is a great way to exercise emotional hygiene. Totally agree. Um, Lisa says, The best about your recent videos and your book to me is your encouragement while teaching. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, Helen, thank you so much for sharing the video. I appreciate it. If you guys, um, really appreciate you guys sharing, getting this message out. Um, let's see here. Great questions, you guys. Okay. This is one of my favorite parts of the, um, first chapter. And this is, will you be a success story? In working with clients over the past few years, 
I've noticed several common predictors of those who eventually go on to be Hashimoto success stories versus those who continue to struggle. Individuals who struggle often manifest the following behaviors. Um, attaching to a dogma that prevents them from getting better. Um, and you guys, and I don't mean to poke fun at anybody, but um, I just, you know, there, I remember consulting with one woman who said, I don't want to change my diet. I don't want to start on medications. I'm not willing to take any supplements and I don't want to spend any money on testing. Um, and she was consulting with me to help overcome her Hashimoto's. And I was like, I don't know that I can help you. Like if you're not willing to change, if you're not willing to, um, you know, think about how the, the things in your life are impacting your health, then I really, you know, there, I don't know what I can do for you other than to listen to what you're going through, but I don't know, I could tell you what to do, but if you're not willing to make the changes, you're not, you're not going to get better. It's, you know, it, it, insanity, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you expect different results. Um, I love and support vegans, and I think in majority of them, they're very compassionate people, very caring people, and that led them to um, become vegans. But in some cases, if a vegan diet is not working for you um, and you insist on continuing that diet, then you're stuck in a dogma. If the paleo diet is not working for you and you insist on eating paleo, then you're stuck you know, in, in a dogma, and that, that's just not healthy. That's not good for us, right? Um, okay, another struggle behavior being unwilling to invest in themselves or necessary healing alternatives. So I will not see a doctor who doesn't take my insurance or pay for this expensive test or supplement. And it's sort of like, okay, um, people that are not willing to invest time in themselves, that, that's another big thing is like, oh, well, I just don't have time to um, relax. I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time to care for myself. It's like, well, you know, that you're going to get what you put in, right? If you're not willing to um, see a doctor that is outside of your insurance, like, you know, obviously use your insurance first to try to find the best doctor for you. But if you've exhausted your search and there's no doctor on your insurance that can help you, then you need to take the next step and find somebody off of your insurance or, um, you know, or do that test that's not covered on your insurance if it can reveal um, your potential root cause, right? Doctor shopping. So this one might sound surprising, right? But um, people who get multiple op opinions from multiple practitioners but don't follow through on the recommendations or they attempt to implement multiple contradicting recommendations. So whenever you're doctor shopping, so you're going to like doctor A, B, and C, and then one doctor uses this protocol that's like, you know, low iodine, and then the next doctor uses a high iodine protocol, and this other doctor uses a completely different protocol, and you're just kind of taking little pieces of their protocols and trying to put it all together yourself, some cases you could be contradicting the protocols. So there's, of course, there's more than one path um, to healing. There's more than one way to skin a cat, right? Um, and we want to make sure that we're doing those things that are kind of consecutive and dialed in. So let's say if somebody just took a part of my advanced protocols and said, okay, well, I'm going to do this advanced protocol, but if they didn't do some of the fundamentals, that would mean that they wouldn't have the best results. So, so that can be a potential struggle. And that's why I recommend for everybody to follow the fundamental protocols before they get um, into the deeper protocols. Perfectionism and unrealistic expectations. Um, this is another behavior that can keep a person struggling. So I want to completely get off of medications and have zero thyroid antibodies within one month of making changes after having had Hashimoto's for 20 years. So, you know, you want to be realistic. You want to say like, okay, I want to move towards getting healthier and getting better. The very first thing we're going to see is your symptoms are going to improve. And we could start seeing that right away. Once your symptoms improve, then we're going to start looking at getting some of those antibodies down. Once we get the antibodies down, then at that point we could start thinking about, okay, can we, um, can we regenerate thyroid tissue? And only at that point would we think about getting off of thyroid hormones. You want to make sure that you're supporting yourself appropriately with, with everything that's out there. And thyroid hormones can be a very important part of your journey. And you don't want to stop them prematurely saying like, okay, well, I'm going to change my diet tomorrow. So I'm just going to stop my medications cold turkey. No, that can be dangerous. And that can be, um, that can be a way of self-sabotage, right? 
Adopting sick as part of their identity as a way to get attention from others or to fulfill other unmet needs. Now, this one, um, this one is a little bit painful to think about that this might be something that you're doing in your life. And this doesn't make you a bad person if this is something that becomes a part of your identity. Um, I know I could share my personal story was I grew up with a mom that's a doctor and she's a wonderful, caring doctor. Um, but she was also a busy doctor and guess who got a lot of attention when they were sick, right? And so, um, of course, whenever I was sick, I got a ton of attention from my mom. She would take time off of work. She would um, take time, let me stay home from school. And she would spend a lot of time with me trying to get me well. And somehow, some, some way along the way, in my mind, um, and even when I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's, it was like, wow, okay, good. Now, now I really am sick, so now I'm going to get more attention. And it, it's a very, very kind of sad dynamic to be in. And it's important for you to be aware of it and kind of and get yourself out of it. You know, don't let that three-year-old or however old you were when you started to have that belief that, you know, you're more lovable or you get more attention when you're sick, um, rule your adult life. Um, so that's something very, very, um, very difficult that we can put ourselves through. Paralysis by analysis. So this is, um, you know, guilty here too. I did that for about a year before I went gluten-free. I just researched like everything. Um, and that's why I have this book for you guys. This has all of the research in it that you can t start taking on right now so you can recover your health. Um, so you know that you don't necessarily, of course, I encourage you to always do your own research, but you know that um, this is tried and tested. Paralysis by analysis of somebody who spends a tremendous amount of time researching their condition but doesn't take action. This person knows all about the paleo diet, they know all about selenium and gut infections, but has yet to try the diet, buy the supplements, or get their gut tested. So this can definitely delay your healing. Another big um, behavior that can be self-sabotaging is social isolation and lacking a support network. And I know um, a lot of us, when we're sick, we may tend to withdraw. And we may want to go back into our, our man caves or women caves and just De detach ourselves from the world, but this is a very, very bad because we're not expressing ourselves and humans are social creatures and especially people who are, who tend to be more extroverted. We actually need people around us. We need a support network. Um, so the way to get around that is if nobody in your community understands is being part of um, Facebook pages like this one or um, Hashimoto's 401 is a wonderful, um, wonderful um, patient forum that of, of people who have gone through the same struggles and getting through support that way may be your way of getting support. And then um, I want to get some of your questions and read some of your comments and then I'm going to read the most common behaviors in individuals who have had successful health turnarounds. So what are the behaviors for success, right? Um, all right, so Let's see, Melanie said, um, she pre-ordered the book for Amazon, can she get the free guide? So if you go to thyroidpharmacist.com slash Amazon, you could add in your Amazon order and that will give you, um, that will um, let you get those bonuses as well. Does low thyroid have any effect on your sleep, sleeping patterns? Potentially, definitely people who um, have low thyroid, one of the most common things is that they feel tired no matter how much sleep they get. Trisha, thank you so much for sharing. Um, Tracy wants to know what's the best thing to do when you have the MTHFR de defect in Hashimoto's. So we have MTHFR protocols in here. You basically want to take um, methylated versions of folate. Um, you also want to supplement with some um, B12 and trimethylglycine. So I outline what you want to do for that um, in Hashimoto's protocol. Um, adding beets to your diet is really, really great and removing processed foods. And we have more information on that in the book. Um, let's see. Agnieszka, hello. Um, Jamie says, I don't have a support network. Um, so Jamie, that would be, you know, part of creating your healing team is going to be potent, is going to be having a support network, whether that's just 
reading other people's comments on Facebook. I know that for me can feel very supportive when I see other people are going through some of the struggles or challenges or have had successes. Um, being part of my email community, um, you know, signing up for thyroidpharmacist.com um, slash gift, you can get hooked up with the community there. I share different success stories, but that will help you feel um, more supported. Whatever you could squeeze in, that would be huge for you. Um, let's see. Meredith, why would my thyroid swell after cooked goitrogenic foods? Um, you know, it could be potentially because um, there's a variety of different things depending on the type of food. Some of it may be oxalates, some of it may be FODMAPs. Um, generally, it wouldn't necessarily be the iodine thing. It could be, um, you know, the iodine blocking thing, but it could be if you are iodine deficient. Um, so what I would recommend is definitely staying off of those foods. Um, and then we have protocols in here for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, for SIBO, which um, helps to address if you're reacting to FODMAPs. And then we also have protocols in there for oxalate issues um, and all kinds of potential root causes. So this would be found in the advanced protocols section. Which food sensitivity test do you recommend, Rebecca says? I like the Test lab test. Um, that's really helpful. Um, I have a lot of information on that in tailoring the nutrition to your diet. So I talk about how to do a, an, a food sensitivity test and elimination diet in there to figure out what foods and how to modify your diet properly. Rebecca, do you like SpectraCell? I do like SpectraCell micronutrient test. Um, you guys, this book has all of like my latest tests that I recommend in there. So you can um, get more information there too. Um, and um, I do like SpectraCell and I like Alatus for nutrients, Alatus Lab for food sensitivities, um, the, the tests for gut infections, 401H and GI map, um, and that is, um, you know, we have, a, I have a listing of like, what's your particular, you know, you go through assessments to figure out what your particular root cause is, and then you go through um, which tests you need to do. So you go through like, okay, these are the symptoms of this issue, these are the tests you need to do to figure out if indeed you do have this issue, and then these are the protocols you need to follow if you have this issue. So for example, if you find that you have H. pylori, I give you H. pylori protocols that are medication-based, that are nutrient-based, that are supplement-based, herbal-based, and what you could do to support yourself, um, as well as we go through the symptoms and the testing. How much selenium should one take? Um, 200 to 400 micrograms of selenium methionine a day is, is the indicated dose for people with thyroid issues. Be helpful for Hashimoto's, Graves' disease, postpartum thyroid issues. Um, the fundamental protocols contain a listing of all the nutrients that you want to take um, because nutrient sufficiency as opposed to nutrient deficiency is one of the quickest ways to start feeling better. Once you have enough N nutrients on board, um, your body can produce enzymes, your body can start getting rid of foods, your body can start metabolizing better, um, your body can start converting T4 to T3 better. Okay. Let's see, other questions here. Does taking diluted apple cider vinegar reduce the acid in your stomach too much? No, actually it can be helpful for you. All right, so getting back to reading. The most common behaviors in individuals who have had successful health turnarounds are as follows. Having a positive can-do attitude. So really believing in yourself and really saying, hey, I can do this. I'm powerful. Um, I have faith in myself. Or, you know, or maybe you have faith in a higher power. Um, just having that faith that you can get better. Accepting the support of a loving spouse, friend, family member, or support network. We're in this together, honey, right? So if you have, um, I have a wonderful mom who has always supported me, and I have a wonderful husband who's always um, very supportive of me as well. So he's, he's actually watching Facebook Live right now too because he's, he's always um, got my back, and I recommend having somebody like that in your life. Um, and TJ says, I am powerful. Yes, you are, TJ. Um, and, you know, sometimes it might be a conversation that you might need to have with them because not everybody knows how to support people when they're sick, especially, you know, for if you're, if, if you've always been healthy and, and a lot of women with thyroid disease where we can be go-getters and 
very powerful women, but all of a sudden, um, thyroid disease just completely knocks us out of our realm. And our partners or people in our lives may not know what to do with that. They might say like, okay, how did I go from having, being married to superwoman to like being married to, you know, a damsel in distress. And so, so part of the healing might be letting them know, hey, I need your support with this. Like we need to get through this together. And that can really shift the person, how they treat you. Um, one kind of sneaky thing to do is to actually thank them for their support and say, hey, I know it must be hard for you. I know things have changed for me, but I appreciate you being here with me. And sometimes that just really softens them up and gets their defenses down and then they become more supportive. Being grateful for small gains and improvements and celebrating little successes. Um, I can't tell you like how important this is when you celebrate those small successes. When, let's say, um, you know, maybe you started off with 27 symptoms, but you changed one thing and now you only have 25 symptoms. Like that, that's a success. That's a step in the right direction, right? Um, I would love for you guys to add in a small success that you've had since you started your thyroid journey. I know for me, one of my small successes was when I went dairy free um, and gluten free, I no longer had acid reflux and I no longer had irritable bowel syndrome. Maybe, maybe that was a big success, I guess. But, um, you know, I really celebrated that. I was like, I don't have IBS anymore. I don't have acid reflux anymore where um, I still was losing hair and I still had panic attacks and I still had thyroid antibodies and I was still tired, but I was like, okay, this is great. And then celebrating those successes led me to create more successes and more successes and more successes until eventually all of my symptoms peeled back one by one. Um, you know, like, and I would make myself a list and um, say like every journal and say like these are the things that I was struggling with and then the following um, time I would go back and say like oh wow I only have like 16 out of the 17 symptoms right so let me know what your small successes are um, TJ says haven't had IBS without cheese amazing huh congratulations that's uh, you know I'm, I'm so happy for you because IBS is it's a thing that opens the door for so many problems. And once you get that addressed, it's like, wow, things come back. And, you know, you're going to, once your IBS resolves, you're going to start seeing that you're absorbing more nutrients. And then your hair is going to start growing back. And you just, it, it's kind of like this, um, it's a trickle effect, really. It's like positive changes and you're just keep, keep moving in the right direction. I had a small success, Jessica says, when I switched from nature grain T3 taking T4 gave me more energy. That's awesome. Um, Natalia said adding vitamin D helped with my energy and focus. Yes, Natalia, congratulations. Going gluten-free, Andrew, um, just for a few days and my brain fog is greatly diminished. Congratulations, Andrew. I'm so happy for you. Thank you for sharing with us. Aw, my pleasure. I, I'm going to cry here a little bit with seeing all of you guys um, having these improvements. Um, Brain fog reduced, Sarah. You guys, I'm so proud of you guys. Um, Jennifer, down to one cup of coffee from, from six. Congratulations, Jennifer. Like you're moving in the right direction. Or three pots a day, holy cow. And quit smoking. Wow, Jennifer, you are just moving in the right direction. I, I applaud you. I'm so proud of you. Um, Magris, reduced brain fog. Um, wow, you guys, I'm just going to... I'm just going to cry here a little bit because I'm so proud of you all. Um, just seeing, um, seeing you guys having all these small successes, I'm just so excited and thinking about you guys just moving forward and moving forward and how you're going to be able to recover your health and your life. I'm just beyond proud of you. Um, okay, so this is a great transition. Dreaming big. So thinking about like what you're going to do when you get better, like what are the things you're going to do with your life once that disease is no longer in your way, right? And so um, I have to get better. I've got books to write, mountains to climb, children to raise, and doggies to save. I'm really, really excited to see um, what's going to happen when you guys shed those symptoms and really become the people that you're meant to be. And this will allow you to live the life that you're meant to live. Um, and you might not even know this. It's, it's like, it's kind of my, um, not my evil plan, but it, it's one of those things that happens when you recover your health. You, you, um, you just 
you inspire other people around you first and foremost and then you are you you become who you were meant to be and that it to me is the most important part of recovering your health doing stress relief hobbies yoga writing working out and knitting um, these are just some potential hobbies I don't know what yours might be um, I know for me yoga does it for me hiking with um, with my dog and my husband is a big hobby of mine actually I love um, doing girly things so whenever I can get like um, non-toxic mani pedis or if I can go shopping or something like that 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 always makes me really happy and relieves my stress um, would love to know what kind of um, things you guys are going to do once you recover your health um, Mary says build business build ministry write books that's amazing Mary I'm so excited um, Julie says close to wear and more physically active Darlene says have hair and just feel pretty again um, Catherine says thank you God bless you for all of your work finally at 62 I can see my life improving I'm so happy to hear that Catherine you just made my day um, Hildebrand thank you so much for sharing this video I really appreciate it Charlene says going gluten-free made her acid reflux go away um, Valerie no soda no gluten dairy um, got on vitamin D I'm so happy to hear that um, you know um, Ruth said thank you for your compassion and heart to helping people around the world get better it's it's my my pleasure my life's work thanks thanks for noticing that I appreciate it um, Heather says your research has given me hope that I can take back my health you can do it you can so do this um, Charlene wants to become a life coach that's amazing you're gonna help so many people Charlene um, oh Mark says Adriana I can't wait to go shopping this week to celebrate gluten-free for three weeks that's awesome I love that you guys are going shopping um, think of me when you go um, Kendra off antidepressant drugs that's amazing lose the fluff and be beautiful again Diane and Diane you're already beautiful and you know and I hope that you get into the space of being who you're meant to be and, and feeling like you are you um awesome you guys awesome to hear this from you so I um, would love to know what you're dreaming big about and would love to know what your stress relief hobbies are what are some favorite ways for you to let go of stress um, next thing is being willing to invest in themselves because they are worth it so you are so worth it you know like if you need to take time away from your job um, a lot of jobs do flex time or um, you know sick time use that time to go and you know schedule yourself with an appointment or a massage or just a day of reading and catching up on things um, I know at one point when I was really sick and I was really struggling I, I worked only two to three days a week um, and I was lucky enough that my husband um, was able to support us during that time with with my part-time income um, but it was definitely something that was well worth it for me to take that time away and for me it was very hard because I always um, I used to get my value from my achievements and my accomplishments um, when I was younger and um, you know not working full-time made me feel like I was less than but I gave myself that investment that opportunity like you know like you would invest in a college degree sort of to invest in my own healing um, and that was through um, you know taking the time for myself I think for me that was the biggest thing and then also willing to buy food that wasn't um, but wasn't cheap food I grew up um, I was I um, am an immigrant to the United States and so I always grew up relatively poor and I would shop for our food at the 99 cent store or like really cheap old foods that probably <laughs> triggered my Hashimoto somewhere along the way and it was a big shift for me to start buying organic stuff and to stop buying at these like cheap places that had toxic food and to stop taking processed food when it was a big investment but very well worth it and um, you are so worth it so I just hope that you take the time to invest in yourself the other important key is um, what's a positive behavior that predicts successful health turnarounds is if you refuse to stop living just because you have Hashimoto's um, so I know a lot of people and you know can make the mistake of saying like oh 
once I get better, I will, you know, go out and see my friends. Or once I do this, I will give myself this pleasure or opportunity. But you know what? Live your life and give yourself every pleasure or opportunity that you can as long as, of course, it doesn't stress you out, right? So the things I'm talking about here are things that you enjoy. So don't withhold going on vacation. Don't withhold buying yourself something nice because you know, you're know you not at your goal weight yet. Just go ahead and do something nice for yourself. Like That's kind of the key thing. Um, asking for help for others. So be willing to ask for help and let others help you. I know I used to be um, ashamed of asking people for help because it just made me feel like I was less than if I was accepting somebody else's help. Help, um, But what I came to realize, and I hope that most of you guys realize, is that people love helping other people, right? Um, like that for some people, like I know for me, I love helping others. That like makes me feel um, like my life is like has a purpose. Like it, it's wonderful for me if I can make a difference in a person's life. That makes me so happy. And why would you deny that from another person if you can have a friend or a family member or a doctor or a loved one that can help you? A lot of times, you know, of course, unless you're bordering on taking advantage of them, right? A lot of times they feel rewarded to be able to help somebody they care and love, they care about and love. I know um, whenever my husband, he's a very strong and independent guy, but whenever he lets me take care of him, I, I'm always really happy to do so. And it, you know, makes me feel great that I can take care of him and um, let, let others help you, you know, accept their help. And for, for me, for a while, it was like believing that other people didn't want to help me or being skeptical. But I'll tell you something, most healthcare professionals, most people in the healing arts, they really want to help you. They may not know how, they may, um, you know, they may have be stuck in their ways, but they actually do want to help you. Okay. Um, Surrendering your need to control the situation. So in some cases, we can be type A and OCD and we want to control everything. But at some points, you need to surrender and say like, okay, you know, maybe I'm just going to, I'm not going to feel good today and maybe that's okay. I need to surrender to that and give my body an opportunity to rest. So in some cases, when we're tired, our instinct is to counter that and to take caffeine and do all kinds of things. But in some cases, when you're tired, you should rest. And probably the biggest factor or behavior of success is resting when you need to rest. And so like giving in, giving yourself that opportunity to rest and heal. So we do a lot of our healing when we're sleeping and resting. So giving you that, that opportunity. Okay, so thanks, um, you guys. You have a lot of really great... Um, Really great comments here. Um, Julie wants to know, is there a meal plan in the new book? So when you pre-order the book, Hashimoto's Protocol, when you go to thyroidpharmacist.com protocol, you'll be able to get um, meal plans. So I've got a few different meal plans for you in there, um, what, right from paleo to autoimmune paleo. So you, you might go back and forth between the diets. You might start um, what I call the step up approach. Um, where you start off with eliminating a few different things and then you see how you feel and then if you need to eliminate more things then you keep eliminating more things so that's one way to do it another way to do it is to go with the most restrictive diet and then keep and then do that for 30 days to 6 um, to 60 days and then add more foods back in and back you know keep adding more and more foods in there's, um, you know, more than one way to skin a cat. In, in the book, I, I talk about the step-up approach. And so the liver protocol has you guys starting off with gluten, dairy, and soy free. And then we move into the adrenal protocol where we get rid of grains because they're horrific for blood sugar issues. And blood sugar issues are um, something that weakens the thyroid and the adrenals. And then in the advanced, and, and, and then, then in the gut protocol, we get rid of a few more foods that can be potentially gut offending foods to the point where we end up um, with six weeks of essentially doing the autoimmune protocol version of um, doing the root cause version of the autoimmune protocol. Um, and that generally is going to be something that, um, that most people will want to stay on from anywhere from six to eight weeks, and then they can start reintroducing more foods into their diet. 
Um, so hopefully that helps. Let's see. You guys have great questions here. Um, Shirley says, what about vegans? Um, so Shirley, for vegans, a lot of challenges can arise with uh, nutrient deficiencies. So B12 is a supplement that can become deficient. Vitamin D can become deficient as well as ferritin. And these three nutrients are very, very important for, for balancing Hashimoto's and if you're feeling better. Um, and so that's one of the challenges with the vegan diet. There's additional challenges um, as well, and I hope to write a blog post about that. Um, Karen says, do we still get benefits from cruciferous veggies if they're cooked, otherwise too much gas pain? So Karen, what it sounds like is you might be having something known as um, SIBO or a reaction to low FODMAPs. We have a protocol on that in Hashimoto's protocol on how to test for it, um, how to see if your symptoms match, um, and how to address it with, um, with natural protocols as well as medication protocols and diet. So um, one of the symptoms of that is having bloating and um, you know, gas and irritable bowel syndrome from crucifers. Elaine says, who would want to skin a cat? Oh, Elaine, um, I would never want to skin a cat. I'm a big pet lover. I love dogs and cats. Um, it, it, it's a ex funny expression that's used in the American language. It, it, means, um, it, it basically means that there's more than one way to do something. Jan says, what's your opinion on cold laser therapy? So cold laser therapy is um, very, very helpful for people with thyroid disease. It can help reduce thyroid antibodies, normalize thyroid gland size, and it can also help a person um, reduce their need for thyroid hormones. In some cases, get rid of their need for thyroid hormones um, by healing thyroid gland tissue. And we cover that in, um, I cover that in the advanced protocols for optimizing thyroid hormones. Candida, is that addressed in your new book? Kathy asks, yes, Candida is in there. Um, Jody says, is there a food sensitivity test for dairy? Yes, um, I cover that in my book, the Ola Test Lab Test. Um, Gloria says, I had insomnia at night, taking magnesium at night. Make sure to get a highly absorbable kind. Oops, um, helped me has solved my problem. That's amazing. I still have to do other common sense things such as no caffeine late, big meals late. Um, that's, yeah, you're, you're smart and you're doing all the right things for that. Um, so it's nice to sleep finally. That's so, I'm so happy to hear that. Congratulations. Um, Josephine, what flour did you use to make breakfast waffles? So Otto's um, cassava flour, you can order it on Amazon. And while you're there, you can also get a, um, um, while you, you're there, we also, the Hashimoto's protocol is also available there for pre-order. Um, Linda wants to know, what's your opinion on LDN? Lotus naltrexone can be very, very helpful for people with um, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's, postpartum thyroid issues, and it can be really helpful for getting a person into remission. I've seen people's thyroid antibodies reduce significantly, and I've seen people's symptoms get significantly better within that. One of the keys is, um, and I've learned that through um, one of my wonderful colleagues, Shannon Garrett, she's a uh, nurse advocate for low-dose naltrexone, is making sure that your candida is addressed before you um, start on LDN. And I do have um, candida protocols on how to figure out if you have candida in the book, and I also have information on how to use low dose naltrexone in Hashimoto's protocol. Um, Rihanna says, I ordered the book right now. I got my parents to buy a copy too. Okay, that's wonderful. I'm, I hope that it'll help you on your journey. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Laura says, is my joint pain caused by gluten? Potentially, yeah, potentially. Um, Sarah, yes, Candida is covered in the book. Um, I can let you guys, let me go through and let you guys know what we cover, what I cover in the book as far as the protocols. So, so I support supporting, so I cover how to support your liver function that helps you get rid of toxins, how to support your adrenals, and how to support your gut, which are the three body systems that are crucial for healing. So 
In the protocols for optimizing thyroid hormones, I talk about optimizing thyroid medications, which are sort of the most obvious, right? Um, so we go through that. I cover um, information about thyroid tissue regeneration. So I cover low-level laser therapy. I talk about low-dose naltrexone or LDN, uh, low-level laser therapy, thyroid glandulars that are non-prescription, and that can be helpful sometimes with regenerating thyroid tissue, aromatherapy, and essential oils. And I talk about how to wean off of thyroid medications. For mastering nutrition and nutrients, we talk, I talk about um, calories, adjust, adjusting calories for weight, or weight gain or weight loss. I cover food sensitivity testing, carbohydrate intake, how to modify that, um, iodine intake, how to modify that. Some people may need to take it. Some people may need to um, reduce it. Um, rotation diet, which is a brand new protocol that wasn't covered before. So for some people with a lot of sensitivities, how to rate, rotate your foods to prevent new food sensitivities. We've got a protocol for that. Um, fructose malabsorption or blood sugar abnormalities, SIBO, copper toxicity, citrus sensitivity, impaired detoxification, losing too much weight, candida, neurological issues, iodine toxicity, sulfur toxicity, mercury toxicity, severe dairy reactions, inflammatory issues, malabsorption, impaired detoxification, gallbladder issues, mold toxicity. Um, menstrual cramps, migraines, restless leg syndrome, constipation, anxiety, muscle wasting, pain, inflammation, dry skin, oily hair, acne, eczema, fatigue, brain fog, low blood pressure, adrenal issues, vertigo, seizures, H. pylori infection, um, vegan diet, Epstein-Barr virus, postpartum, breastfeeding, pregnancy, fat malabsorption, pancreatic enzyme insufficiency, skin rashes, fat malabsorption, hair loss, anemia, pale skin. Um, those are some of the things that are covered. Let's see, having um, traumatic stress, post-traumatic stress disorder or physical or sexual abuse as triggers for your thyroid disease. Um, adrenal insufficiency, how to address adrenal issues and hypocortisolism. Um, infections that are linked to Hashimoto's, H. pylori, blastocystis hominis, yeast overgrowth, SIBO, Epstein-Barr virus, and parasites. And then we, I also get through dental protocols. So what to do um, if you have had periodontitis, which can be a trigger, sinus infections, um, how to remove toxins chemical sensitivities, what to do with those, um, EMF sensitivity, mold, breast implant illness, toxic metals, and um, those are just some of the things in there um, in addition to some of the other toxicities. So um, as you can tell, it's a pretty comprehensive book um, that goes through the latest, most um, effective and efficient protocols that I've developed for people with thyroid disease um, on how to Basically, you know, the, the book is called Hashimoto's Protocol, a 90-day plan for reversing thyroid symptoms and getting your life back. Um, you can get this over on thyroidpharmacist.com slash protocol, and you'll be able to get um, some amazing pre-order bonuses, including recipes and other kinds of guides. Um, I've really enjoyed hanging out and chatting with you guys. It's been so great here. Um, let's see. Sat says, yoga is great. Um, our books for sale, Brenda wants to know, we do have books for sale, so you can get them at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. If you go to thyroidpharmacist.com slash protocol, you'll be able to order your book on there to be shipped to your house, and um, you know you would, you would get it to your house within between the 28th and the 15th, depending on what shipping and company that you use. Sarah says, are you going on tour? So um, I'm not going on tour, but I would love to do speaking with you guys through Facebook because I think that's always fun and, and I could stay, um, you know, connect with many of you at a time. Let's see. Pat says, your opinion on camel's milk, it can be helpful for people. It can be very helpful, especially 
um, with dairy sensitivities and lessening some of those reactions. And let's see. Thank you so much, you guys, for dialing in. If you would like my, if you would like me to do additional readings, I could read from some of the other chapters, let me know. Other than that, um, really enjoyed hanging out with you guys today. If you go to thyroidpharmacist.com slash protocol, you'll be able to get some really um, fabulous bonuses when you pre-order my new book, Hashimoto's Protocol. Um, this is coming out in just two days, and you can get it shipped right to your front doorstep and has a fundamental protocol that will help you recover your health, um, that will help you feel better within... Um, Within really just two weeks, about 60 to 80% of people will feel better. And then the full 90 days will help um, 80 plus percent people feel better. And then we have advanced protocols to help you figure out and eliminate your triggers. So it's been so fabulous to be hanging out with you guys. And um, I'm really, really excited for all of the successes, all the small successes you guys have shared and all of the goals that you have shared and I'm excited to continue keeping up with you and seeing how you take back your health and seeing the amazing, amazing things you're going to do with your life and um, with your health um, once, you know, like once you have the information on what you need to do to take back your health, because unfortunately this information is not, not available through conventional physicians just yet. So this book, Hashimoto's Protocol, has all the protocols that can help you recover your health and um, really, really cannot wait to see what happens when you do that. It's been really fun hanging out with you um, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.